In the 18th chapter of the book of Acts, Luke tells us that while Paul was on one of his missionary journeys, he helped to establish the church in the city of Corinth. From Corinth, he eventually made his way over to Asia Minor, where he worked in establishing the church at Ephesus. While in Ephesus, Paul received word that there were some problems occurring in the body of Christ at Corinth. One of the problems had to do with a division among its members over a preference for preachers. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each one of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. When Paul had heard of these problems, he wrote, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the book of 1 Corinthians. And in that letter, he condemned the practice of division. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Sadly, some in the church at Corinth began dividing over a preference for preachers. After being baptized, some were saying, Well, I am of Paul. And others were saying, I am of Cephas. And some were saying, I am of Christ. And yet Paul wrote and denounced this sinful division by asking three very important questions. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? The answers to these questions are obvious. First of all, no, Christ is not divided. In Mark 3, 22 through 26, Jesus stressed the unified nature of his essence. And then number two, the answer is no again. Paul was not crucified for them. And then, number three, they were not baptized in the name of Paul, but instead, according to Matthew 28, verse 19, sinners are baptized in the name of Christ. So based on these criteria, would it have been wrong for Christians to call themselves Paulinites? Would it have been a sin to name the church after Paul? Yes, it would have been wrong. And yes, it would have been a sin against God. Well, what if today in the church there was a well-known preacher by the name of Alex Campbell who was himself a powerful and dynamic proclaimer of the Word of God? And let's say that he was a well-educated Bible scholar who was responsible for converting thousands upon thousands to Christ. If we, in seeking to honor him, began wearing the religious name Campbellite, do you think this would bring glory to God? Do you think it would be acceptable to God? Not according to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. But rather, in order to call ourselves a Campbellite, three things would have to be true. Number one, Christ would have to be divided. Number two, you would have to be baptized in the name of Alex Campbell. And number three, Alex Campbell would have to be crucified for you. Thus, in calling yourself a Campbellite, you would be dividing the body of Christ and would end up bringing glory to Alex Campbell instead of bringing glory to Christ. In 1 Corinthians 1 verse 31, Paul said, If anyone glories, let him glory in the Lord. Peter said, If anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this behalf, that is, in the name Christian. Now friend, if it were wrong to divide the body of Christ over a preference for preachers, would it not be wrong to divide the body of Christ over creeds or man-made doctrines? Would it not be wrong to divide the body of Christ by the wearing of unauthorized religious names for either ourselves or for the congregation? This church may not teach the same thing as this church, but according to denominationalism, they're both the church of Christ. Scripture teaches us, however, that there is one body, one church, and that that church teaches the same thing uniformly. And that's really what we need to strive to do today, speak as the oracles of God and not differentiate and denominate ourselves into a number of different groups, all claiming to be from the one body. Friend, the unity of the church is emphasized again and again throughout the New Testament. 
and we must therefore not be guilty of dividing the body of Christ. Listen now to Jesus as he prayed for the unity of all believers. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Now listen to the Apostle Paul as he instructed the church in maintaining the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all, and in you all. Now let's notice that not only does God demand unity, but also division and sectarianism is condemned. Notice in the following passage that division is classified as a work of the flesh, which must not be practiced nor tolerated. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousies, wraths, factions, divisions, parties, envyings, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I forewarn you, even as I did forewarn you, that they who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Yes, division is condemned. And as you heard just a moment ago from passages like Ephesians 4 and 1 Corinthians chapter 1, we must endeavor to to maintain the unity found in the body of Christ. We must speak the same things. We must be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. But in order for that to happen, each of us are going to have to give up those things that are not found in the Bible. We're going to have to give up unauthorized religious practices or the wearing of names that are not found in the Bible. And we're going to have to return to the Bible for a thus saith the Lord for all that we do and say. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. To do something in the name of the Lord is to do something with His permission and His approval. So are you seeking the Lord's approval? Are you in His church? Are you wearing a religious name which brings glory to Christ? Are you living and worshiping in a way that is authorized or acceptable to Christ? Friend, are you striving to promote unity in the body of Christ by going to the Bible and doing things according to God's will and God's way? You know, it would be absolutely wonderful if sincere truth seekers everywhere stopped wearing man-made religious names and gave up their creed books and confessions of faith and all unbiblical practices and became just a church of Christ as revealed in the New Testament. Friend, not only would this be wonderful, but we must make every effort to make this possible. So in answering our third major question, must the church be unified, we have to answer with a resounding yes. Just as we have learned in this lesson that the church is the body of Christ, who are the saved, and that number two, the church is important, essential, and necessary, we have also learned that the church must be unified. These three points are fundamental to the faith. Indeed, they are a part of the blessed gospel of Christ. They are part of the truth, the word of God, the truth that can set us free from the shackles of false religious practices and man-made churches. Indeed, friend, my hope is that you will accept and obey this truth regarding what the Bible teaches about the church that Jesus built. Remember, the truth and only the truth can set you free. I pray that you will obey the truth and become just a Christian, become a part of God's family, the church. And the truth shall set you free. God's word is true.